Hey guys, so surprising probably no one, TCG Con, which is a large trading card convention, kind of like Collector Con, did go belly up. Uh, there are maybe bad management. Uh, the exact reason is due to lack of money. Now, why do they have a lack of money? Again, perhaps bad management. It could be something else. But in my opinion, I can just share an experience I've had with TCG Con and how mismanaged it was. At no point did I ever feel like I was talking to a professional. And that's a little bizarre, right? Given the fact that, you know, I don't know. They definitely wanted me to attend because I have more views and subscribers than a lot of their special guests. And you can just verify that via the numbers. Uh, again, facts are numbers and statistics and analytics are not meant to offend people. They are just the facts. Uh, and now, one thing that I can tell you is it was completely mismanaged on for me. So all I asked was, hey, can I get a, a ticket to the event? Um, the individual responding had to ask his boss and so on. And they suppo supposedly they promised me, my girlfriend, her nephew, and my dog a ticket to go attend the event for the weekend, like a VIP or media pass. And when it came time to pick it up, um, they never sent an email where to pick it up, how to pick it up, when to pick it up, and so on. There was no way for me to pick it up. And I already had scheduled a something else in, in the meantime because I didn't, I would have gone. I would have paid my own money to go. But the whole experience was red. And just the whole experience with the person handling, I guess, the VIP guests and saying was just very, very bad because, you know, they promised you these tickets. They said they were going to send you an email. They never sent that email. Uh, so there was no way to pick up these tickets. And then they later told me uh, at like 8 p.m., oh, yeah, you were on the ticket list. Uh, uh, do you want to pick it up now? And it's like, no, man, it's Friday at 8 p.m. Like, I'm out in dinner. So we already had scheduled something else to visit a few other card shops in the local area to um, look at some Weiss cards for the nephew. So back to my understanding of what happened here, and this was a very big TCG con they had large conventions. This is basically MetaZoo 2.0. Uh, MetaZoo, they ran out of money to pay the winners of their tournament. So the players did not get... If the players are not getting paid, you are in serious trouble, right? Because you're advertising all these really amazing uh, rewards and prizes and prize pools, right? I can show you. I'll show you a few of them. And suddenly nobody is getting paid. And the reason that a lot of people are attending, because you, you have to pay a cover to go come in, um, in addition to whatever money that you're paying. It's pretty bad. Uh, same with MetaZoo not paying the players. Uh, this is a very, very bad thing because they should probably be paid first. Now, allegedly, they didn't pay the service providers. They didn't pay the judges. Very few people actually got paid from this. And I kind of understand um, they were using the leverage, right? They were using pre-orders. I mean, it, it's basically MetaZoo in a, in a nutshell, right? They were using pre-orders to fund current. So they would say, hey, there's a native stream kit. Can you all put in $100? Everyone put in $100. And then a year later, there's, there's no kit, right? There's no delivery. There's no even announcement what happened to the kit. But that money has already been used up on other stuff. That is essentially, you know, the model for a lot of non-business people. They think they can use future earnings to pay for current bills. Now, that might work if you're Uber Eats or you are a larger company. But that's not going to work if you are a, a trading card game company. Uh, and the reason it's not going to work is they will call you out on the money you owe. And they will ask you, hey, I noticed that you have this money. And eventually people will stop pre-ordering tickets, right? Pre-ordering tickets is, I think, pretty, you know, pre-ordering product, pre-ordering tickets. I mean, unless you're really positive that individual, that store is going to deliver. I mean, we just had did clutch store. We had stores. You know, we went from um, stores, right, to... Um, 
we went from stores to conventions to card games. They all, everybody in the TCG model, they seem to build themselves on this idea that they can just collect pre-order money and then pre-order money, they're going to use it to pay their current staff which for obvious reasons isn't likely to work, right? I mean, it's one of these, I don't know who came up with this idea. I guess it's the idea as old as time, but it obviously was not going to work here. And in terms of, you know, in terms of the prizes, uh, the prizes were too much money. Um, it, it clearly was way too much money in my opinion. You got the cosplay prizes and I don't, you know, I saw the cosplay event and I didn't really see that many people on it. I saw a video on it and I don't see that many people, but the prizes were $1,500. So it, it's a chicken or egg. They need huge prizes for Magic the Gathering and all these games, right? They need to have, they're giving hundreds of thousands of dollars in, I guess, prizes overall, or at least 50, 60, same as MetaZoo. And do they really have the player base to support this? They're hiring all these influencers and these marketers and None of them have any following, in my opinion, um, and they're not bringing people in. It reminds me of Brian Kibler. Um, the, the, it was a Las Vegas convention, and they hired him, and they paid him all that money, and he just spent all the time gambling right, in casinos and didn't actually g promote the event. And that turned out to be a disaster. All these conventions, there was a Magic convention a long time ago when he was still relevant for Magic the Gathering, and they, they paid all these influencers a ton of money. None of them posted about the event. And then the event just flopped. And then you're wondering why. You no, know, as soon as these conventions pay these influencers this amount of money to be here, there, there's a warning sign. Because unless the influencer can actually bring and do ticket sales for them, it's not worth it, right? I think that's what happened with this event. Is they their prize pool was too high given their player base. Um, their influencers um most of them I, I don't you know you go on their social media they don't go on youtube channel they got instagram like 2000 and you're just like why is this guy you know popular and are they really going to bring in the audience who will buy the ticket and the answer is no uh, no one's coming here to see them you know and uh, there's a, the, a video from another youtuber he's a sports card guy and the lines for these influencers are zero. There was no line. There was like a line for the Mario guy and then no line for anyone else. And you, you got to like, you know, think about it for a moment in time. If you are a convention center. Should you be paying all these cosplayers this much money if they're not, in fact, a net positive on your profit line? No. Um, now, maybe they have investment money and that ran out. That's probably another good explanation of what might have happened. Overall, you know, it's really hard to run a TCG con convention and I'm not surprised based on my personal interaction with them that they were very disorganized, very, they didn't understand. I mean, there, there's very little video for the fact that they've been, you know, in Houston twice. There was almost no video of the convention. You picked the wrong influencers, right? Anyway, bye guys.